served our country with honor. They gave of themselves so we can live free. They returned home and continue to serve our community. They are the men and women of South Georgia. They are the heroes among us. WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Montlick & Associates. Thank you for joining us for this special presentation, Heroes Among Us. Each month, along with Montlick & Associates, we dedicate one day to highlight some of the men and women who have served our country and also make an impact on those around them right here in South Georgia. These are the Heroes Among Us. Army veteran Lewis Harrison has quite the story, and it's a journey he didn't anticipate straight out of high school. But now his service carries beyond the battlefield in small town Edison. Yeah, I was just a teenage boy, and when I finished high school, they put us, the, the draft took us. Mm -hmm. um, I was drafted uh, in the military in 19, October 10, 1950. Mr. Lewis Harrison, who is 96 years young, about to turn 97, grew up on a farm in Edison, Georgia, the city where he now supports local churches and students. Uh, I'm blessed to have a long life. Um, and my mother lived to be 103. My father was 80. Um, my Two older brothers, they um, was in the fighting um, in World War II, and I had uh, Korea and Vietnam. He also served in Germany. I was in Germany about 19 months um, because we had an occupational army there. It was, uh, the war was over. Uh, the country was flattened. Um, so I served uh, uh, with the engineers. We built roads and repaired uh, um, apartment buildings for uh, under the Marshall Plan. Okay. Um, so I served there, and when my time was up there, I came back to the states. Mr. Harrison says he spent seven years total serving his country. Well, it had a lot of impact upon my life. Yeah. Uh, uh, nothing belongs to me. Um, God has been good. I uh, would like to tell my fellow Americans that um, the change is coming. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, heavy. it's coming at a time when people are very uh, frustrated and um, they, I think we sometimes, we, uh, we lose sense of our direction. His advice to younger generations. Um, uh, fear God and, and, and mind your own men. Colonel James Ivey in Leesburg has many brave and courageous stories from his time in the Air Force, but one of his favorite memories is working on a piece of technology we use every day. I said, you go in the Marines, you're going to sleep in a foxhole. You go in the Navy, you're going to get seasick. You go in the Army, you're going to sleep in foxholes. And, and the Army and the Marines, you're going to eat MREs. Mm -hmm. I said, join the Air Force, you get good training, plus the fact you'll sleep in a bed every night and have decent food. Ivy shared plenty of stories about moving unexpectedly overnight and how he learned he would be involved in the Vietnam War. I jumped on the airplane, flew out to Travis Air Force Base, where I was to catch the military flight into Thailand. And as I was boarding that airplane, climbing up the stairs to get on that airplane, a civilian comes running out waving a piece of paper. Major Ivy, Major Ivy. So I go back down. 1131st Special Activity Squadron, Bowling Air Force Base, Washington, D.C. Turned the page with duty in Saigon. <laughs> wow. 
He also worked on a piece of technology we use every day. Strategic Automated Total Information Network, SATIN, which basically was email. I didn't tell Al Gore we was doing this, right. Right. <laughs> since he supposedly invented email. Uh -huh. The Air Force already had it going before he ever heard of email. Retiring in 1983, Ivy spent 27 years serving his country, if you include ROTC, and he continues to serve South Georgia today. Um, I think he was just a good leader for people. I mean, I, I, I'm able to see him now in leadership roles within our church and our community, and I mean, he, he wants to make things better. You know? But it was a good life. I, I can't imagine me to sitting behind a desk playing with a computer. Navy veteran Terrence Singleton Sr. now serves as a pastor. The Tifton man looks at his mistakes and hardships as lessons, something he works to integrate into the lives of others. The hardest task um, is more of a challenge and, and I take those challenges head on each time. Singleton served in the Navy Reserves and the U.S. Army. It teaches you how to, to mature, mm -hmm. um, responsibility, it gives you um, a sense of belonging, uh, a chance to prove yourself. He now lives in Tifton with his wife, where he's a pastor and mentor to young men. As I look back on my old experiences, and some, especially the military, the older um, soldiers that helped guide me, they took me under their wing and said, this is not the way to go. You're, you're a little too wild, you're a little too out there. Bring it back in, you know, and you know, have fun, but don't destroy what you, what you build. He has three degrees, is a strong advocate for education, and mentors young men seeking guidance. He tells us that pastors never really retire and that it's just part of his calling. Once you made it, I believe it's your responsibility to go back and to help those less fortunate um, to um, show them the way or give them a different perspective of how you don't have to just settle for what life gives you. You can make it better. He says he felt called to help those in South Georgia after settling down here with his wife and children. Once in, um, we started having, having, having kids, raising a family, and getting rooted, I seen the need here in the community. A lot, a lot of times I thought I made mistakes, mm -hmm. not knowing that God allowed me to go through those avenues to learn those lessons. Singleton says if this story resonates with any young men looking for mentorship, you can email Terrence Singleton Pastor at yahoo.com. You no, know, you, can't, you can't do everything, mm -hmm. but it's our part to do something. Adolph Lee served in both the Air Force and the Navy. He's proud to be from Albany. He says the area has grown in more ways than one since he first spread his wings in the military. When I went in in 55, the school desegregation had just came down in 54, and the military under President Truman had been integrated in the latter 50s. I can't remember the exact date now. Yeah. But so when I went in and going into Electronic was not my first choice. Yeah. I wanted to be a policeman, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> U.S. Air Force Master Sergeant Reverend Adolph Lee spent more than two decades serving in both the Navy and Air Force. He traveled all around the world, but always seems to land back home in South Georgia. I learned so much from the service. When I left Albany, I was just a little country boy. Mm -hmm. Had never been past Leesburg. Uh, Sylvester, best thing that I could have done was to come back to yeah. Albany. I found out going overseas that Albany is just as good as any place in the world and better than a lot. He served along his lifelong best friend Norman, who's also from Albany. We were the brothers that we never had. He was my best man, I was his best man at our weddings, we went to school together, we just been together all our lives. He, he's been married one year longer, mm -hmm. he and his wife. Mm -hmm. And the wife and I, if she had lived to June the 17th, would have been 66 years. And they're 67 years. Lee says his time in the military sewed his life together in ways he could have never imagined. To make a long story short, the wife and I went back to Japan where we stayed for four years. We weren't fortunate enough to have children, but while we was in Japan, we adopted our son uh, from Korea, yeah. which was the, the blessing of our lives. Blessing. It's a word he uses often in life. I've been a blessed life. I mean, uh, I pray often. I don't know why God blessed me so, so he must keep me around here for something.
Here's the story of John Floyd, who currently serves in the U.S. Navy. He's an Albany native who carries a piece of home with him everywhere he goes. My definition of home is, uh, I know it sounds a little cliche, is, but it's where family is. It's where the family is. Um, I, I could honestly say it's any given place, you know, but is definitely where the family comes together. That's what I consider home. John Floyd is a hospital corpsman from Albany. He's currently serving in the United States Navy in San Diego. We've been literally East Coast, West Coast, back and forth. Um, we we have really uh, haven't really been at any single place for more than three years, I believe. So yeah, we, we've been all over the place. And his biggest fan, better known as mom, traveled all the way from Albany to spend the holidays with her son. He is just a, a, a nice son and he's a family person and family is everything. Because that's all, in the end, that's all we have is to treat people right and be good to your family so you have no regrets. Uh, we, we've been trying to get her to come out here as much as possible. Uh, we have uh, three kids, uh, the youngest one, Jess, well, she's about to turn two. Um, so, you know, we want to get as much family time in as possible. And man, it's, it's awesome to see them all together. It's awesome mm -hmm. to have the family together. Floyd says home can come in different shapes and forms, but there's always lessons to be learned along the way. The biggest thing for me is understanding people as a whole. Uh, Coming into the Navy career, it's easy to just hone in, focus on your craft, focus on yourself, your family. Um, but my, my greatest strides of success have come from actually the people I work with and we accomplish things together. So definitely understanding people and figuring out, you know, what makes uh, people get motivated to work and do the things you're doing and working around you and uh, aspiring to greatness together. Robert Marshall spent his 93rd birthday at home in Valdosta, surrounded by loved ones. Many know Mr. Marshall as a veteran, but others know him as a teacher, principal, and coach. After serving, Marshall moved back home to South Georgia. He graduated from Albany State with a master's degree in education and began teaching. One woman says her entire life trajectory was impacted by Mr. Marshall. I eventually took notice of everything he was telling me and started working in the library. Uh, in high school. And I used to spend a lot of time there and uh, he said I should become a librarian. So that's what I did. After graduating from high school, I uh, went on to Albany State where he went to school. Morrison says she was always touched by his generosity. That taught me that it is my responsibility too to give back while it's giving back to the school, uh, giving back to community activity, community service. Never to give up, keep going, never let this place stop you, stop you from doing what you want to do for the rest of your life. So um, I'm glad I listened. And those closest to him say it's no surprise he has dozens of people celebrating his birthday with him. We just cherish and love him and enjoy him and the time that we get to spend with him now. And um, he just kind of keep us on our P's and Q's and on our toes. You are watching WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us. If you get hurt on the job, it pays to speak with a Montlick workers' comp lawyer right away. They'll help you determine what money and benefits are owed to you. For example, you may be entitled to medical care and lost wages, as well as physical and occupational rehab. You may even have a personal injury claim. To learn more, call Montlick now for your free consultation. They've represented injured workers since 1984, and their attorneys know what it takes to win. Welcome back to WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Motlick & Associates. Army Colonel Nikki Knighton was just the second African-American woman in the U.S. military to earn her aviator wings at Fort Rucker. She grew up in Cuthbert and still gives back today. The community gave so much to me when I was growing up. And my mom was always encouraging us to give back. And that's why I started a community uplift project that I call Shape Self-Esteem Harmony Awareness Pride and Education. And on an annual basis, we give scholarships to graduating high school students just to help them get a jump start on getting to college. 
right? Whether they use the scholarship to buy supplies, to for gas money, whatever they need it for. We do that and we do that in my mother's name. Family and home, two things that keep her going. I was motivated by a strong family and a strong family background and the encouragement from family to always do good and to always seek to be better. Uh, and, you know, just to never stop, uh, never stop achieving, never stop striving and never say that, you know, you I've reached <laughs> the very top. Right. When you think you're there, there's always someplace else to go. Always strive to do your best and to be your best and to always give back and bring up someone else behind you. Knighton has one of the longest and most impressive resumes I've ever seen. But when asked her biggest accomplishment. My biggest accomplishment is probably being a wife and a mom. I think we did a pretty good job. Right? So far, we're very proud of our son. We're very part of, proud of what he's doing now and doing on his own. So I would definitely say that um, my biggest accomplishment is family and staying connected to family. Knighton was the first woman in the U.S. Army to command a tactical combat arms battalion. She also served as a rotary wing aviator and Black Hawk helicopter pilot, spending years as the senior woman combat officers in the DOD. She says her inspiration came from right here in South Georgia. There are so many great heroes that came out of the, uh, out of our surrounding, you know, of course there are some, fa one, some famous ones, but there are a lot of unsung heroes that come out of our small towns. Right. Exactly. And so, uh, I salute them, uh, and, and I am encouraged by them to this very day. Eric Crump served in the National Guard for seven years. He now devotes much of his time to helping young men in Albany searching for a sense of direction. Yeah, don't underestimate them. <laughs> uh, they can definitely do a lot. Uh, so it's really exciting when you start talking to them, trying to understand what kind of drives them. Uh, and uh, I have two uh, boys in the program, but you know, other uh, children in this community has been uh, Quite eye-opening and, and exciting because they want to prove themselves. Crump served in the Army National Guard for seven years, and now he works to instill military values such as courage and commitment into those looking for guidance. It's great that we have Marines, uh, active duty Marines, coming here to help us with training uh, with these youth. So uh, I'm Danny's dad. Uh, I'm you know I'm not a, a Marine, uh, so it's great when we have Marines here that can instill those same values. Uh, the Marines and the young Marines together uh, to make the program really come alive. When Crump joined a few years ago, there were only a few members due to the pandemic, but now momentum is back in full force. We've gone from two kids to four kids to eight kids to 30 kids in the program. So it's really exciting and it's great to see how the community is coming together to help us. Uh, to raise you know, tomorrow's leaders for Albany. The program teaches children ages 8 to 18 years old discipline and leadership skills. I came from a military family, and so I see the, I lived the values uh, for over 20 years when I joined. Uh, so, so for me, it was natural to be uh, in that environment, and I understood the values and what I was getting into. Don Gray, Director of Facilities Management with the City of Albany, says Crump exhibits the very best of us through actual action. He's a humble hero where the focus is not on the work and the sacrifice that he's making, but on the service that he's providing. Not only is he providing the service, but he's also inspiring our youth to provide a service. Planting a seed for the future, one connection at a time. It's really, it's been great to really create friendships as well as partnerships uh, with different people, because uh, we know we're all doing something that's bigger than ourselves uh, for our community. National Guardsman, Police Lieutenant, and Dad. Chris Hutcherson is a very busy man, but it's his passion and drive for making a difference that make him such a staple in Albany. National Guardsman, Albany Police Lieutenant, and Dad. Lieutenant Chris Hutcherson is a busy man. It's his drive and passion for making a difference that makes him such a staple in Albany. I like um, being out in the public. I like um, serving. I like to make someone happy when I'm able to uh, solve a, a crime that a, or anything that's happened to them. I like that feeling. Um, in, in turn, I've learned how to deal with when they're not going to be happy with me, you know, um, having to come, you know, be the 
person that has to hold him accountable. The Valdosta native met his wife in Albany and has been serving the area ever since APD helped launch his career in law enforcement. He's been with APD for 14 years and the National Guard for 17. He says the two roles, although a bit challenging to balance at times, go hand in hand. I would say my level of cultural awareness um, has uh, exceeded what, what one would have had they just been here in Albany and never gone anywhere, never joined any service or anything. So my biggest accomplishment would be just um, developing my cultural awareness and being able to deal with um, different groups of people. And although lieutenant and guardsmen are full-time roles, he's also a full-time dad. My children attract other children and mm -hmm. other children get to see their father and they look at their father as a per person within the community, serving the community. Oh, it's the police, you know, and that makes them want to either become a police officer or do the right things or hang in a, in a, in a environment that makes them want to do the right things. Mm -hmm. So being out here and them seeing me and having to come up and talk to me, seeing me do the right things, my children acting around, just makes them want to be on a, you know, a, a, a better path. His piece of advice to those thinking of joining the service is simple. Go to school before go. Mm -hmm. You know, go to school, get your education. And if the military plays a part in, in assisting you in, in getting that education, then I, then I can understand going um, for that purpose. But if you can, go to school, get your education, and, and convert while in college. Saluki Quadri Kwawi of Baconton joined the Marines right out of high school. He learned many lessons about life and humanity along the way. Everybody all over the world are laughing, proud to say, we are the same, we are under one umbrella, and that's a human family. Everything else, it was made up by someone else. And you can learn a lesson by just treating people like you want to be treated. Quadri Kwawi is a bright, kind and resilient soul who majored in psychology at Albany State. I played football at Albany State and graduated there where I met my wife and we've been married for 52 years. And I, I did just about everything. The drum major at Albany State where my brother was the drum, was the uh, charge of the music. Music being something that has helped him dance his way through life. That's one thing that the human family, uh, all of us agree with. We all pat our feet and pop our fingers to music. Mm -hmm. And it don't matter where we be at, at baseball game, football game, we forget about race and everybody is one. After serving in Vietnam, he was sent to the Marine Corps Logistics Base in Albany. Now retired, Kwawi still lives in South Georgia. He not only cares for his family of six children, seven grandchildren, and seven great-grandchildren, he also volunteers with the Boys and Girls Club of Albany. A piece of advice he gives to those who look up to him. I, I believe that every man should experience a service for a little while, mm -hmm. and that'll change their whole life. If you just stay in one place a long time and really don't have the experience, uh, go in a place outside of the United States, you'll see the people are the same. When they say it, they cry the same. And when they're happy, they, they, laugh, they laugh the same. But both of them bring tears. It's the tears of sadness and it's the tears of happiness. Kwawi says he volunteered for the service only two days after graduating high school. His life, full of both triumphs and hardships, all make him who he is today. Yes, when I was wounded three or four times in Vietnam, laying up there and making you think about the gift that God gave you. And it's very, very precious and you shouldn't ever take it for granted. I was drafted uh, in the military in 19, October 10, 1950. I was in Germany uh, about 19 months. We built roads and repaired uh, um, apartment buildings for, uh, under the Marshall Plan. Join the Air Force, you get good training, plus the fact you'll sleep in a bed every night and have decent food. But it was a good life. I, I can't imagine me to sitting behind a desk playing with a computer. It teaches you how to, to mature, mm -hmm. um, responsibility. It gives you um, a sense of belonging, a chance to prove yourself. I learned so much from the service. When I left Albany, I was just a little country boy. 
had never been past Leesburg, uh, Sylvester. The best thing that I could have done was to come back. We've been literally East Coast, West Coast, back and forth. Uh, we we have really uh, haven't really been at any single place for more than three years, I believe. It is my responsibility too to give back. Always strive to do your best and to be your best and to always give back and bring up someone else behind you. But there are a lot of unsung heroes that come out of our small towns. Because uh, we know we're all doing something that's bigger than ourselves uh, for our community. I would say my level of cultural awareness um, has exceeded what, what one would have had it just been here in Albany and never gone anywhere, never joined any service or anything. Everybody all over the world are laughing, crying to say, we are the same, we are under one umbrella, and that's a human thing. Everything else, it was made up by someone else. And you can learn a lesson by just treating people like you want to be treated. You are watching WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us. You may be surprised to learn that at some law firms, you never get to speak to an actual attorney, not even once. That's not the way they do things here at Montlake. If you've been injured, you can speak to an attorney on your very first call at no cost to you. Remember, all free consultations are not the same. If you're hurt in an accident, call 1-800-LAW-NEED to speak with the Montlake attorney or dial pound win on your cell phone. Welcome back to WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Montlake & Associates. Hi, Terrence. Wow. Hi. We yeah. just wanted to tell you congratulations. Yes. You won our Heroes Among Us contest. So a lot of people are rooting for you and appreciate your service. So we wanted to tell you July, happy July 4th and thank you for all you do in the community and also for the country. So wow, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. Thank, oh, this, oh my yeah. God. I, I think really I'm doing enjoyed the sharing your story and uh, just appreciate you. So Wow, you won. Thank oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank everyone who voted for me. Thank all the other applicants who, 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 who was able to be all, we all are winners. Yeah. We all serve and I thank you for their service. Thank you, um, WLB. Thank you, Heidi. Thank everyone. Thank God you. bless. Awesome. God bless. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you have a military hero in your life you would like to nominate for special recognition, go to WALB.com, click on the Heroes Among Us tab at the top of the page, and fill out that information. We'll continue to share those stories right here on WALB on the last Thursday of each month. We want to give a special thank you to the National Infantry Museum and Fort Moore for opening their doors to us. And also a big thank you to all of the veterans and active duty members who were courageous enough to share their stories with us. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great day.